be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. 
Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's Holy Word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord.
There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord. There is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged, as we join together in worship, and strengthened as we exhort one another through God's holy word. May God's blessing be upon you as we step into the life-giving stream of the Lord.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Can you shout, praise the Lord? Oh, that sounded good. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? If so, give him a good hand clap of praise as you stand tonight. We'll get right on into the worship service. Turn around tell somebody, good to see you in church tonight. supply all my needs he is my El Shaddai he always looks out for me Jehovah Jireh he is my God oh yes Jehovah Jireh he is my God my God is more than enough he can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Oh, yes, Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. So why should I worry? About the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs. When by my faith I know my God is more than enough. Oh yes, He's more than enough. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. My God is more than enough. He can't supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Oh yes, Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. is his and the fullness thereof everything that i need you can be sure of jehovah jireh he is my god oh yes jehovah jireh he is my god God is more than enough. He can supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. Always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Oh yes, Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Oh, 
stopped you Friday's disappointment Sunday's empty too Since when has it possible Ever stopped you Journey, I get lost 
of Jesus over you in your hurting and in your sorrow I will ask my God to move I speak the name cause it's all that I can do in desperation I'll seek heaven and pray this for you I pray for your healing that circumstances would change I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus name I pray that a breakthrough would happen today I pray miracles over your life in Jesus name in Jesus name authority declaring blessings and every promise that he is faithful to keep I speak the name no grave could ever hold he is greater he is stronger he's a God impossible I pray for your healing that circumstances would change I pray that the fear inside would flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. grave could ever hold he is greater he is stronger he's the god of possible i pray for your healing the circumstances would change i pray that the fear inside would flee in jesus name i pray that a breakthrough would happen to I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I speak the name of Jesus over you. sorrow I will ask my God to move I speak the name cause it's all that I can do in desperation I'll seek heaven and pray this for you I pray for your healing the circumstances would change I pray that the fear inside would flee Jesus name I pray that a breakthrough would happen today I pray miracles over your life in Jesus name in Jesus name
trouble on every hand, but I'm not stressed out. Complex about things in life, but I'm not in despair. See, I'm sometimes persecuted, but I'm never left alone. Cast down, not destroyed, cause I'm one of his own. I'm getting back up. There's a race I've got to run. I'm getting back up. There's a battle to be won. My feeble hands I'm going to raise. With my mouth going to shout His praise. By the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm getting back up. a sword that I'm holding in my hand, a shield of faith in front of me, a helmet of salvation on, girding my lords with truth and my gospel shoes I have put on, I'm getting back up, I'm getting back up, there's a race I've got to run, I'm getting back up, I'm getting back up, there's a one. My feeble hands I'm going to raise With my mouth going to shout His praise By the blood of Jesus Christ I'm getting back up Just man who fall seven times and he rises up again and no matter what you're facing tonight we've got to make a decision to get back up right because we've got a race to run and we've got a finish line out in front of us tonight I felt like doing this song and we'll end with this my boat of life Sails on a troubled sea If ever there's a storm in my sail But I have a friend Who watches over me When the moon turns Sunshine again. I know the master of the wind.
times I soar like an eagle to the sky. Among the peaks, my soul can be found. Unexpected storm may drive me from the heights. It may bring me low. Good to see everybody out tonight. A few announcements here. Uh, don't forget the uh, holiday trip to holiday trip, the 10 and under trip to Holiday World, August the 27th. So remember that. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. Uh, kids need to be accompanied by an adult or the proper paperwork filled out, so remember that. Uh, also, ladies group taking that trip to Tennessee September, September 15th through the 17th, so remember that. There's my slides. Back to school kickoff Friday night, 7 to 9.30 p.m. So see Sister Hannah with questions on that. Uh, senior youth mission trip, that'll be Sunday. So we're still taking up items. I think the final count on funds is 6,500, Jason? 6,550. So, uh, so thank you all for that. And we've got a pretty, uh, a pretty good contact. So be in prayer for us as we go. Um, you know, even though it's three hours from here, it's a different culture, different folks. And uh, just pray that God leads us. I just got off the phone with Mark from up there. Uh, so be in prayer for him and his daughter. They kind of run a mission uh, outfit up there. And they've seen a whole lot of stuff and uh, a whole lot of destruction, and I'm sure it's affected them. So pray for them. Pray that they just keep getting uplifted. A little story. You want to tell the story about the... Jason called me today, and uh, somebody called me this week wanting uh, to donate $500 for Bibles, and uh, then I think it was matched. So we, we ordered $1,000 worth of Bibles, and... He told Jason told Mark that he had, you know, 300 and some Bibles to bring up, and I, I think the way it went is Mark just started crying, and he said, "Hey, I just had a just had a phone call, and we needed the lady needed Bibles, and we don't have any Bibles." Uh, so, you know, he he was talking to me this evening. He said, "We see God moving, and it's rough." Uh, so pray for him. I was on, in a meeting today with a guy from Breathitt County. He said there was one area I hadn't even heard this. It's 66 houses in the area, and 33 of them's gone. So, uh, people, there's, there's kind of like Haiti when the earthquake, there's tent cities pop popping up and stuff. So, uh, remember that. Um, remember those people. Remember us. Any other, any other announcements before I turn it over to the speaker? It's not you again tonight, is it, James? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, out, out here, there's a wheelchair two wheelchairs, 
a walker, and a potty chair. If anybody needs those or knows they're free, they're right out here. Uh, take them. If not, we'll we'll take them with us. But if somebody here needs them, I'd rather rather you all take them first. So, or if you know anybody that needs them. I'm not sure. I didn't look at it. I I don't think it is. All right. Brother Billy Brown, you preaching tonight? You speaking tonight? I'm speaking. I'm not hearing. That's all right. <laughs> Welcome, Brother Billy Brown, up here tonight. We appreciate Billy. There we go. He asked me what happened to my iPad. I I wanted to read out of the Bible tonight if I could. I I like my iPad actually better for reading. I can set the print to size that I want it. And uh, I set the background black and then the letters show up real good. But... uh, uh, just sentimental reasons. I just wanted to bring a Bible tonight and try to read from it. And uh, the print don't agree with me too much, but there's there's something about looking down and seeing the words <laughs> like that in in the in the Bible. And I've probably I'd be afraid to say how many Bibles that I have uh, given away in my life. Uh, I'd buy a Bible and I'd mark it up. You know, I'd get me a marker and I'd mark up a bunch of important things to me. And before long, I couldn't read anything. It, it was all marked. So I would give the Bible away. And then I would give another one. And then sometimes somebody would have problems with their eyes and I would uh, go buy them a Bible and give it to them. So I've given away quite a, quite a, quite a few. But... I would love for this time, I say this a lot, but I hope this time is not wasted time for you. It would be the worst thing in the world to me to get up here and waste 15, 20 minutes of of your precious time without being able to hopefully help someone. And uh, while I was reading this afternoon, afternoon, I, I sat down and read this and I helped one person right then. So I said, well, it, if nothing else. But I, I know that there's a lot of people in uh, what helps one or you generally help somebody else. And I'm, I'm thankful for you being here tonight. And I pray that God will anoint your ears. If God anoints your ears just right, it doesn't make much difference what I say something will good, you'll hear something good out of it. And uh, I'm thankful for this, for this opportunity and thankful for this word. And part of this message tonight, part of it is going to be answering a question Brother Rick asked the other night. He, uh, if you remember, he, he made a statement like, how many are, are you are you ready? If the trumpet sounds, are you ready to go now? Is there anything? Why do you know, do you know that you're ready? That's a very powerful question. And 
about everybody to say, yeah, I'm ready. But are you ready? And uh, I, was, I was standing back there, and a lot of things bother me. I've, I've, Linda laughed, and like I said, said, I was like that guy who used to be a show monk. I don't know if any of you ever saw it or not. And this guy, he can't stand nothing being out of whack. And a lot of times I'll go back there and I'll stand back there in the back. And, and uh, the, the other night, this, this Bible stand was, man, it was plumb over toward Aunt Martha's, whichever way Aunt Martha lives. But it was all out of whack, and I was kidding around with, uh, with uh, <laughs> the fellow that was in the sound booth. And I said, man, if they don't get this straightened out, I'm going to find me another church. <laughs> That's that's the first thing. That's the first complaint I've come up with, you know, about the church. You know, you got to find something wrong with wherever you go. But, but I'd sit there and I'd try to listen to the preacher and I'd look at this crooked stand. And then they, the next night it was different. And then finally, I think Russell straightened it out the, the other night. He straightened it out for me a little bit. But uh, I hope I'm standing in the center of it for you. But I don't want to bother you. But. A lot of things bother people in church. Some things should bother you. Some things shouldn't. One of the things that should bother you is you should hear something occasionally that will cause you to question yourself. It's good to question yourself sometimes and, and, and check and, and see. I know, uh, I don't know if, if many of you have ever done this. They've got GPSs now. People follow GPS. And I, I said, if mine tore up in the car, uh, I'd just have to pull over and sit there and cry till somebody come and got me. I wouldn't know where to go without that thing telling me where to go. But there was a time in my life that I had to uh, be able to take a compass and a map and go in places where I'd never been, uh, in hills and jungles and whatever, and be able to be at a certain place at a certain time. And uh, I, I've, I've learned to always question what I'm doing, to question, make sure. Uh, I had a boss one time that uh, I would come up to him and I'd ask him a question about a blueprint or something. And I, and I was just a greenhorn. I was just starting out in, in the business. And, and uh, I'd say, uh, the guy's name was Joe. I said, Joe, what, uh, what do I do about this? And, and Joe would kind of look over at it and, Look up at me and say, be sure you're right and go ahead and walk off. And there I'd stand. Oh, he never answered my question. And uh, I didn't understand what he was doing for a long time. I probably told some of you this before. But I would, it would cause me to go back and look, and I could figure it out finally by myself. So a lot of times we want somebody else to do our work for us. We want a preacher to tell us stuff that we need to dig out ourselves. And uh, we, we get to looking like that, but we need to know. We need to know. And so I've been, a, I've been a Christian, a believer. I've been in church for many years. I told somebody here a while back, I, I live in a bubble. I reckon I, I don't realize the amount of sin that's around. I just don't, I'm not aware of it. I just don't know, and I don't realize it. But I had a person, I've, I've had this said before, uh, well, you, you know, you can't tell me nothing unless you've been there. Unless you've been in stuff, then people listen to you then. And I think that's one of the most stupid answers or things that you could say to anybody it, is because, you know, don't I have sense enough to look and look at a truck and see that big truck speeding down this road? Don't I have the authority or the sense to say, Bill, be careful. Don't get out. Don't pull out in front of that truck. Don't step out in front of that truck. I said, what do you know? You ain't never stepped out in front of a truck. What are you trying to tell me? Do I have to step out in front of a truck to be able to caution somebody else? Do I have to get bitten by a rattlesnake in order to caution somebody else? Be careful in those woods, those weeds over there, the snakes over there. 
do I do I have to do I have to be bitten before I have the knowledge to tell? Yeah, it's good if you know something. You you can you can speak, but a man of God or a one of, woman of God, a person who believes and has the Spirit of God moving in their life, have the ability to tell me or you or anybody else something that's good sometimes. We can be taught something that's good. We can be taught from somebody that don't really know and shouldn't know, but they can still, they're still able to, able to teach us. But while he was sitting back there, while, he was, or while I was standing back there, I began to think, I know that I'm saved. I know that I've passed from death unto life because I love the brethren. Uh, that's something that happened years and years ago. I found out that there was people in the church that I used to not have a whole lot of use for. But when I got saved, they looked different to me. I had a different feeling about them. What was that? That was the Spirit of God changing me. And so I know that I passed unto death from death unto life because I love the brethren. But that was a long time ago. What about now? I still use that as, as a barometer. I've used that as a barometer for years, or thermometer, or whatever you want to call it. I've used it to read my life. I find when I get to start getting aggravated at different people, and, and they're really bugging me, I find that here's where the problem is. Usually it's not that person. Is my love changing toward that person? So I check myself. I want to find out what, where am I? Where am I spiritually? And, and then, then the next thing that I thought of, and I would love to have just hollered it out, but I don't believe, I don't want to interrupt the speaker and have the ushers, whoever the ushers are, carry me out and talk, throw me out in the yard. But I wanted to holler out, I'm saved by grace, by the grace of God. Your faith, yes, faith, but it's by, by God's grace, not of works, lest Bill Brown could boast. You know, men have a tendency, if they accomplish something, puff their chest out and say, look what I've done. Look what I've, look what I've accomplished. Well, I'll tell you what I've accomplished. I accomplished making my way to an altar one time. And I've accomplished a lot of years of sometimes thinking, man, what's the use? I'm not getting anywhere. I'm not doing any good. I'm not doing nothing. I'm not helping anybody. What's, 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 my, what's my purpose? What's my purpose, Lord? I get the feeling things like that. But you know what? Each one of us have a purpose. Each one of us have a use. And there's something that we can we can do and we, we need to be doing. I'm going to read uh, just a little bit here if I can get started here. Uh, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time. In verse, in Romans chapter 4 and verse 12, I begin reading and it said, And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet under, uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abram or, or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Now, I want to, you, I started to say add to this word. The Bible cautions us about adding to the scriptures, adding, and said, you know, it tells about that. But what I'm doing is not really adding. I'm taking this further on something that's already written. I don't want you to go off and say where no law is, there is no transgression. Because we, if we did that, we could say, well, there's nowhere in the Bible tells me I can't smoke dope. 
But there's a place in the Bible that tells me if I esteemeth anything to be unclean, to me it's unclean. So sometimes there's things that's not written down that you think is wrong, then it's wrong to you. It's wrong for you to do it. If you feel that it's wrong, and something maybe you've been taught so long that you've got to believe in that it's wrong, and you believe that it's wrong, well, then if you cross your beliefs, God don't like that. He don't like us crossing our... He knows our, our brains. He knows our, uh, our abilities. We all have different abilities to think and to understand and to unravel scriptures and, and, and look at mysteries. We all have different abilities. Some of us, like me, are not, maybe not very good at it. But God judges me according to me. He don't judge me on how Arendelle thinks. And he don't judge Arendelle on how Gary thinks. And, and that's a wonderful thing. He, he judges us on, on that. So when I say that where there is no law, there's no transgression, but also remember that, that other part. Uh, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace, by the grace, thank God again, to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to them only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abram, who is the father of us all. And uh, I want to go on, skip on down. In the verse 19, it said, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification." For my justification. You could put your words for yours. You could say for mine. For our justification. We're saved by grace. By, through, through faith by this wonderful grace. We're saved. Does that mean we always feel like it we're good? No. Does that mean that we're always good? Right there. What it, what it talk about Abraham not staggering at the promise of God through unbelief. But yet when you read further in the Bible, you find that, at, uh, uh, that Abraham was one of the persons that's mentioned as an example. But also Sarah was mentioned as an example for faith. But when the Lord was speaking to Abram, uh, Abraham and telling him that, that he was going to have a child and Sarah was in, he said, where's, where's Sarah? She said, He's, she's in the tent. And he was behind the guy and Sarah laughed. And, and the Lord asked him, said, why? Did Sarah laugh? Why did she laugh? Because why? Because she ain't no way. There ain't no way. Look, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm too old. There's no way. <laughs> ha! That's funny. But to even made make matters worse. You laugh? No, I didn't laugh. She caught herself. So I didn't laugh. Have you ever laughed at something that somebody said that you could do or you should do? Have you ever felt like, I can't do this, I can't do that? Sure you have. Have you ever felt like God can't fix this? Has there ever been something in your life that's happened, what can God do to fix this? I don't know what he can do. It's, you know, we, we can get in certain shapes where that we don't realize, I don't know how help is coming, but it's coming. I don't know how God is going to give me victory, but some way or another, I'm going to be victorious. I don't know how I'm going to, to be able to look back and say, I'm an overcomer. But he will make it possible for me to be an overcomer. I don't care what kind of temptation comes upon me. I don't care what happens, how the, whatever happens. I can look back and there's going to be a way of escape. There's nothing going to happen to me except what's common to man. I had a terrible loss in my life, 
one time. But you know what? Some of you have had the same types of loss. And, but you know what else? We're still here. We're still here. God some way made a way of escape. Some way or another, he's blessed us through a, a, a lot of this stuff. So, uh, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then I want to uh, go on to the last part of, of what did I want to speak on tonight. Uh, we know that we're saved by faith through grace, uh, or through faith, we're saved by grace, rather. For in Romans chapter 7, it's not been too long, I think, that I heard uh, this spoke on a little bit, but I'm, I'm just going to start, not going to read it all, because Paul had a way of writing a lot of stuff that's a little confusing. And if you're not careful, you can get tangled up in some of the stuff and, and, uh, that's there and, get, and misunderstand it. So I'm not going to read all of this. I'm just going to read part of it. And uh, he's talking about his mind. And he talks about the law being spiritual. And he said, but I'm carnal, sold under sin. Verse 15, it says, for that which I do... I allow not, for what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. This is kind of like you know, if I'm sitting listening to somebody saying that, I'm, what? What are you trying to say? What are you saying? He said, for the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Who was it that old comedian used to say? The devil made me do it. There you go. There right. Uh, we want to blame everything on somebody. Well, naturally, the devil's behind most of the stuff that's going, that's going wrong. Uh, but uh, uh, in verse 20, it said, Now, if I do that which I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. And, that, and the way you're looking at that is say, you're saying almost, uh, It's not my fault. I can't help it. That's just the way it is. Verse 21, he said, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. In other words, he's losing the battle. The, the mind and, and, and the flesh, uh, the flesh is, is, is winning. And, and, and uh, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Now that's, if, if we stop right there, we're messed up. We're, we've not got the idea. We're, we're, we're completely off in left field. With the mind, I serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. There is still something wrong here. We go to, ver to chapter 8, verse 1 said, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ." Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of, li of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent it. What he's saying here is, this right here knew better. But this right here 
the flesh had desires in the wrong area. This is one thing that, well, it's something that we wonder why the world, is, well, the world cannot see it. The only people in this church that can understand this are Christians, are people who are spiritually minded. If you're not spiritually minded, you can get so messed up in this type of reading, in this type of thing, that you'll leave not knowing where you've been. Uh, for if they that are after the flesh do mind the thing of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Let me give you an example of a carnal, carnally minded person. And, and, uh, and the, the, we'll take the spiritual mind part later. Well, verse, first here in verse 7, it says, Because the carnal mind is en enmity against God, it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. It's, it's, it's against. It can't. So, with the mind, with our thinking, when a young person looks at themselves and they see that they are a female. Or, in some cases, they see that they're a male. Then they got to think and start thinking, but what are they thinking with? A carnal mind. A carnal mind is not going to come up with the correct answer. A carnal mind will come up with a correct answer sometimes in history. A carnal mind can come up with, an, with a correct answer in trigonometry, in geometry, in psychology. A carnal mind can come up with a lot of great answers. But a carnal mind cannot come up with a spiritual result until that person gets saved. It has to be. So the carnal mind would tell this child where their eyes told them they were a boy, their carnal mind said, no, you're a girl. And then the government goes along with the carnal mind. And we wonder what's going on. It's because the mind is carnal. They cannot think. They cannot think properly. So what do we do when we vote people in? Some, most of the time, is to say, and if you hold your nose and vote. If you just voted for the Christian to go in, how are you even going to know? You don't even know who the Christians are anymore. You don't know who anybody is. The only person you know today that you can be assured of is yourself. Now, I'm not saying that we have to doubt our brothers and sisters. No, no, no. I trust you. I, I do, and, and I was talking to a brother the other day, and I said, I have no, it was, he, he went to a different church than I do. But I said, I don't have no doubt that you're not a, 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 a true believer. I don't have any doubt. And I don't set out trying to change you. I don't set out to do that. But, man, we better set out to change ourselves if we've found ourselves, our mind, getting carnal on anything, if we find that, that as our brother's been speaking about uh, getting used to things and letting everything in the world carry on and go in church, and uh, I think I mentioned this one time, that uh, used to, a, girl, a little girl used to sing a song, uh, uh, Debbie used to sing a song, uh, uh, Getting Used to the Dark. She'd sang it down at Geneva years ago. I remember singing that song. But that's kind of what we do. We get used to the dark. We get used to sin. 
we get used to so many things that we just, we just tolerate it. And before long, if you're not careful, you'll find in yourself and having pleasure with people like that and, and condoning it. That's where a carnal mind will take you. And yes, you can be a spiritually minded person and allow your mind to revert back to that. You have, that's where, that where he's talked about the war, warring and the members, there's warfare going on continually with every one of us. We're in a constant battle. You know, sometimes in, in, uh, in, in real life when you're in a, something goes on, you can have areas that you can go to where you can relax and get out of some of the mess sometimes. But this right here, you cannot let your guard down. You can't let yourself go. You've got to continually uh, be on the alert because Satan wants to, wants to mess you up. Uh, the carnal mind is empty against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Can't do it. Cannot please God. Now, this has been mentioned in church numerous times lately. I, I've heard it mentioned, maybe not in the words, the very words that I'm using, but I've, I've, heard, this, I've heard this used. There are people that go to church, and they're in the flesh. There are spe people that go to church who are spiritually minded. Now, when I mean spiritually minded, I don't mean that I have to be running and jumping. I don't mean that. I don't have to be. I don't mean that I have to be screaming to the top of my voice. I can, put, I can give a message in a calm voice. And that message can be just as real and just as true. Don't let yourself get into the flesh. I am saved by the grace of God through the faith that I had in Christ Jesus. That's why I'm saved. That's why when the trumpet sounds, that's why I'm going. By that grace. If, it, if that grace ain't there, because Bill ain't, and I don't, I'm not talking about that Bill. This Bill has not been good enough to go to heaven. I've not done anything good, good enough to go to heaven. What is so frightening is when I, yeah, there was a time in my life when I thought I had, to, I had to be like this, I had to do like that, I had to do whatever somebody told me to do before I could go to heaven. And I found out I cannot do what everybody tells me to do. I can't live that way. I, I, it's not in me to do that. I'm not trying to tell nary one of y'all how to go to heaven. But I'm, I'm, talking to, I'm talking to a lot of people that's way smarter than I am. That's got a little, way more ability than I have. And, 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 you know, there's a lot of people that looks and, and say, well, if, if I'm running across, this, if I'm jumping and kicking, I'm anointed. That's crazy, folks. That's crazy. You can be anointed without doing that stuff. I'm not saying I, I'd love to jump and kick, but if I get to jumping and kicking right now, somebody would probably have to pick me up directly because I'd fall over something and break something. And I'm not talking about breaking nothing here, breaking something here. But I'm happy in the Lord tonight. I'm sad sometimes with circumstances, but I'm happy in the Lord I talk to the Lord daily, every little bit. What are you telling me that for? Are you trying to brag on yourself about how good you are? No, I've done already told you. If you was listening, I'm not good enough to go to heaven. Praise God. But I met the fellow that is good enough to take me to heaven. Amen. Glory. And that's what we're on. That's that's. That's a train we're all going on, folks. We're all going to, we, by the grace of God, 
I'm saved. By, the, by that wonderful faith, the faith that's kept me going, sometimes when I didn't see how, when I think, man, where, where's, is this going to be forever? And somebody come up and, and, and say, oh, you know, hang on a little longer. But you know, when I look back over my life, I heard some of the song when I look back over my life. I look back and I see that I've had a blessed life. I have been blessed so much. I've had the most wonderful friends anybody could ever ask for. My grandson one time, Zach, the big old, my little grandson that's up like that, he said, Paul Bill, you've got some of the best friends of anybody that I've ever known of. And I do. So I can praise God because I've got such wonderful friends. I've got a good place to go to church. A, a, a wonderful place. Good brothers and sisters that I go to church with. I trust your prayers. And I hope that you would trust mine. And, and I'm, I'm so thankful. I don't feel like it naturally... There's another night that I've went that I've stood here and right now I feel almost like I've wasted your time. But I've I've actually I think this has helped me. Uh, and I'm I'm hoping that it's one or two of you <laughs> would be would be touched and helped. We're we're blessed, folks. We're blessed so much and and yes, if you feel like running and jumping and shouting, I ain't against that. Yeah, if you feel like it, y'all do it. I done ten times more sitting in my chair reading this Bible before I come to church than I have since I've been to church. That's that's why I, I almost know. Well, if I don't, I, I probably don't even need to speak because whatever I'm speaking to, I must have been speaking to myself. God bless you. Aren't you blessed? This is a very wonderful time. Come on, brother. If somebody will come and give us a song, and the musicians will come on back up here. Now, y'all don't run up here all at one time to sing. Somebody come up and sing. Brother Kenneth, Sister Desi, or one of you. Y'all looking back to see to see if they's looking back to see if Come on, Sister Desi. You're the closest. Brother Gary, you just come to the altar to pray. <laughs> Brother Kenneth, you might have been able to run up here faster. Sister Sister Edna, come up to help her. Would you stand? This altar is open tonight. What you gonna sing now? Sunshine and rain, even sorrow and pain, Jesus still is my comfort and my guide. His grace, I'm gonna see my first. Let me take it down. sunshine and rain even sorrow and pain Jesus still is my comfort and my God and his love comforts me and his grace has set me free and someday I shall stand by his side I am I am blessed every 
All right, if you've been blessed by the Word of God, give Brother Bill a good hand clap. Do you appreciate Brother Billy Brown? Let's see here. Let me get the prayer request tonight. Uh, Brother Greg is wanting us to remember his wife. She's got separation anxiety as her baby is getting ready to fly off and go to Moorhead State University. And she's just got to be there by herself with Brother Greg and occasionally the grandbabies. Those grandbabies will make it all better. But remember Vanita. Also, his uncle Jim Wren, uh, they did some tests and uh, didn't get the results that they wanted, so remember him. Remember Kenny Smith. That's uh, Brother Jason Smith's uh, dad. Uh, sugar dropped pretty low, and he fell and injured himself, and I think he's got to have surgery Monday, so remember him. Uh, continue to pray for Heather and Brian Carpenter. Uh, continue to pray for Jimmy Adams, uh, my brother-in-law. He had a, a heart uh, defibrillator put in yesterday. He's home, and uh, he did well, but uh, he's still, you know, extremely sore, and, you know, sometimes we get in a big way and pat somebody on the back, and, uh, he, he can't take those type of pats for right now. He's, uh, he's, he's recovering. So uh, remember Tammy Morgan. Remember Ramsey Brown, Aaron Stone, Paul David Stone, Madison and Morgan Widener. Uh, continue to pray for Kay Hogue, uh, for Jesse Riley. Uh, continue to pray for Kim Carrier, uh, for Brother Mike Carrier and uh, Sister Bethany Carrier. Uh, remember Renee Chambliss, Thelma Cook, Randy and Charlotte Brown. Uh, continue to pray for Brother Gary Brummett and Tabitha Bullock's dad. Remember Connie and Larry Baston. Also continue to pray for Dudley Lewis. Uh, remember Sister Cheryl Brown, also Sister Alma Wilcher. And uh, how many with an uplifted hand would say, Brother Rick, we have somebody or something?
I would assume that's Noah's uh, great grandfather. Yeah, I got it. Who? Randall. Okay. All right. Remember her. All right. Thank the Lord for that. And something that we always do, we didn't do it this year. And it, I don't know, it's, I guess, because I'm old, but we didn't pray over our children and our school staff. And so remember, I, I, Lincoln County, I think, had their first day today. Um, Pulaski County had their first day today. And, and uh, our little wildcats... Our bear cats turned into tigers and then went from tigers to wildcats, and now they're yellow jackets. And so, you know, I, I don't know what's going on in the Lincoln County school system anymore, and I really don't know much about what's going on in Pulaski County either. So would you stand with us tonight? Brother Bill is going to ask prayer over the needs as well as over the offerings. So, Brother Bill, God bless you. Precious Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, we humbly bow before you. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in the house of God tonight. Thank you, Lord, for Brother Billy Brown, the good message. He brought a good message, all the good words he spoke. Lord, we just thank you for the victory we have in knowing Jesus Christ. We can go by your word, Lord. We believe your word. Your word says that Jesus is coming soon and coming to get the church. And we are born again believers going to leave out of here. Lord, thank you for the offering. Bless those who give, those not able to give. Bless our services this coming weekend. Bless and Lord, our pastor Sunday morning with a great message. Help us live every day like it's our last day. Let our light shine. Help us to come out from the world and be separate. Touch not the unclean thing. You said you'd receive us. You'd be our Father, and we should be sons and daughters of God. And join ours with Jesus Christ. We thank you for that. We love you with all our heart. Help us all, Lord. Just do what's right and let our light shine. We love you. Bless our church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At Glad the City of God. Welcome to the live streams of the Green River Pentecostal Church. Our prayer is that you will be blessed and encouraged as we join together in worship and strengthen.